that I am not going to allow them to mess nope. up with information. Well, by your welcome. Um, welcome, Thank welcome, you, welcome. Again. We want to learn about um, reducing belly fat. Yeah, and we just started, we're gonna start over. And we, you're gonna bring, obviously you bring your best game all the time. Uh, but then this one, just because we had those hiccups, I want this to be your best show ever. Okay, <laughs> so that when we live here, we would know that we, uh, you know, that we have learned everything that we need to learn and um, we'll move forward from there. So welcome to the show one, once again, and you know, take it from here, introduce, introduce yourself a little bit, tell us a little bit, a little bit about your background and uh, yeah. in, in running an exercise. So, um, so basically over close to 40 years, I've been running stroke, doing some form of fitness consistently uh, because I'm very passionate about fitness. And um, as I grew as a Christian, as a child of God, I began to realize the fact that keeping fit is actually a deeply spiritual affair. Uh, it's not like when I first of all gave my life to Christ as a Christian, when if you were into fitness, the people would look at you as if you were a canal and you're circular because you're focusing on your body. But I began to read, as I read, continued to read the scriptures, I began to realize the fact that God actually does expect us to look after our bodies because the Bible calls our bodies a temple of God. Uh, um, and if our bodies are the temple of God, then we owe God to actually look after our bodies by doing whatever we can to uh, keep it in tip top shape. So, um, um, so that was my journey. So that was my journey uh, in, 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 in fitness. And I, I realized the fact that I have a passion for running. Um, I've done, like Dr. Marino said, in the first session I've done anything from ultra Ultra marathon or 50k ultra marathon to marathons to all, uh, half marathons to 10k's and different types of runs, um, cycling, swimming, squash, tennis, anything that's sport related. <laughs> I've pretty much almost done it, but I'm grateful to God because my focus in my YouTube channel, which I have, so I'm a YouTuber, um, is which is called Spirit Runners UK, is to encourage people to look to God to help them to look after their bodies. Um, okay. And in the process of doing that, uh, I, I know, I understand that a lot of people find it difficult to be motivated to, to do any form of fitness. When you look to God for grace to help at your time of need, he motivates you. So you just find that you don't even understand why you're doing it, but you're just able to just go out and do your run or your brisk walking or, or, you know, or Zumba or aerobics or whatever it is. So my focus is we need to look to God to, to help us, to give us the strength and also to motivate us. And that applies to every area of our life, but also specifically to exercise. When we come from that angle, it's easier for you to, to do it. You'll find that the Holy Spirit, your personal helper, begins to help you personally to be able to develop an interest and a motivation, personal motivation to be able to do it. So, um, so I'd like to encourage you, this session is not about telling you off you know, trying to find faults with how you've lived your life in the past and stuff, but it's about helping, helping you to be able to um, change your lifestyle, to actually begin to prioritize health and fitness and doing more to look after your body, which is God's temple. So we are focusing on losing belly fat, um, which is an area of the body that appears to be very difficult, and especially as you get older, you find it. Like, it's, it's, it's an area where people, you know, they seem to have tried everything and nothing seems to be working. But the certain principles that we, we need to, we need to or, or should I say processes that you need to follow in, in, in terms of trying to achieve that goal. You know, the goal is not just to um, lose belly fat, but also, um, okay, so, okay, the goal is not just to lose belly fat, but, but actually to, um, to, uh, to live a healthy and a fit lifestyle um, overall. You know, I, I, as much as I know belly fat is what we're focusing on, but it's, we're talking about a whole picture, a whole package, which is general body fitness. Um, and I always start off by saying that people need to consult their doctor before they start any form of exercise. 
uh, sort of that way they're well informed decide what type of exercises to start with and how to control their diet which is a very crucial part in in losing belly fat and fitness um, and the strategy to really um, uh, to attack this to use is to focus on reducing fat first and then um, then we go for definition so you, your goal is to lose body fat and the first of losing body fat you lose the belly fat and then and then you then focus on defining your your you know your your stomach area because we're doing we're doing obviously uh, belly fat here um, and when you've achieved that then you need to do what needs to be done to maintain it because it's not just about losing it it's not just about defining it but also maintaining it um, so uh, so our goal is to make make sure we, we you know we're talking about um, uh, your a total lifestyle change changing your lifestyle completely changing um, the way you, you, you your, your mindset the way you think think changing the way you you do things and also changing your 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 outlook to, to fitness um, and I must say that there's no quick fix you know there's no uh, fast food type solution. There's no, um, um, uh, let me just snap my finger and, and, and get it done immediately. It's, it's about being patient. It's about being consistent. It's about being, uh, keeping, sticking with it and, and keeping going, even when you don't seem to be seeing any results. What I find with belly fat especially is that you don't tend to see results. It takes a while to actually see the results. It doesn't mean nothing's happening. So you may be doing all this exercise, you may be doing certain things, but nothing's showing up on the outside. And the point where you give up, it may be the very point where you begin to see the results showing up on the outside. So consistency is quite important. Uh, patience is also quite important because those two keys uh, mentally help you to be able to get to your goal, which is to lose that belly fat. So I'm going to be talking about different things, but I think I'll, uh, I don't know if I'm, am I okay to carry on? Dr. Yeah, Marino, well, should... you know, before you go on, I just want to, let, let's just start with, uh, I, I love what you've said about it's consistency, it takes time. Uh, and, and when we're talking about this, this belly fat, there are some that, that happened because of the COVID and that's just people because we ate a lot more. Um, but then there's belly fat that, um, like I was saying, like I'm over 50, right? And then sometimes it, the, the older you get, it's just more difficult. It, it looks as if it's the, the belly is the struggle. Yeah. Is there a reason for that? Yes. I think generally for, for especially, okay, so if I, if I look at for women, for example, as you begin to approach menopause, because um, we're all at that age where we're, you know, where either we have a wife's, you know, you already, you've already hit menopause or we have friends or families, whatever. Um, uh, your metabolism begins to slow down. So you would eat a donut, for example, when you are in your 20s and your 30s, and you know there will probably be not much to show of the donut in your body. But as you get older, you eat a donut, and then you could almost see the donut showing up around your waist <laughs> because, you know, <laughs> because your metabolism, <laughs> the metabolism, metabolism slowed down. You know, this little slice, a slice of cake, and then you know, next thing you know is you go on the scale and you're like, wow, what, what happened? I only had a you know, tiny slice of cake because the metabolism slows down. So um, we, we, can't, we can't eat like we used to eat before and we can't ah. eat all the stuff that we used to eat before. We have to be more careful with what we eat and what we do. Um, people also tend to slow down a lot and uh, with women with uh, having had children, childbirth, maybe they haven't really done much or not been able to do much to try and lose the baby fat that they've, you know, that they've stole over the years and approach the age of menopause. So it's been there for quite a while. It now, obviously, metabolism has slowed down. So that adds to it. The baby fat is still there. Uh, you know, they eat as they normally would. That adds to it. So all that just adds. And there are more fatty layers in the stomach area, especially for women because of uh, childbirth and carrying the baby. It starts as a protective covering for, for the baby growing in the womb. So they tend to have to walk twice as hard to get rid of it than, than men do. I mean, men who tend to have 
uh, um, belly fat uh, have issues with um, either the, the type of food that they eat or maybe a, a lot of alcohol because alcohol tends to, you know, tends to cause the weight to, to uh, a lot of belly fat as well. So, um, and also maybe they've had a medical condition, maybe true to, uh, due to some form of medication is caused them to put on weight, um, the type of food that they eat, what time they eat. I mean, that's general for both men and women. So if you're eating late, for example, uh, yeah. you're eating a lot of sweet things, all the sweets, uh, you eat full of sugar in your tea, you know, eating a lot of carbs, you know, high carbs sort of uh, like African foods, for example, uh, a lot of pounded jam and a lot of uh, about Ooh, don't uh, go with pounded yam. Yeah, you food. might get. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Don't touch pounded you know, yam. Yeah. <laughs> <it's, it's, laughs> I mean, it's all right to eat them, but if you, the thing about it is, it's the same principle. If you put in more in your body than you burn out, your body's going to just store it, and you have a lot of fat receptors in your stomach area. So your body stores. Your body will store. Uh, fat in your body because it thinks that you might get to a situation where you might need to burn it. So for a good example is if you find yourself in a, in a desert island, for example, or you're in the, you know, you're in the Sahara Desert or somewhere very far where you don't have access to food, your body would burn that fat that's stored as energy. That's why you find that sometimes when people are, you know, we hear all these disasters, maybe there's been an earthquake and someone's been um, in the rubble for like two, three days and people are like, wow, how did they survive that? When the body gets to that state where it realizes the fact that there's no more food coming in, it starts to burn the fat. So these are all mechanisms that have been put there to kind of, they're kind of like lifesavers. But the mm -hmm. problem is we don't really need them on a daily basis, and if you're if you're eating more, you're taking putting more in than you're burning out. The body will just store it because it feels okay. In case I need this in the next three years or next, I don't know, a few months, let me just store it in case there's an emergency. So it's 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 those are those are factors that that contribute. But with us going older, metabolism slows down. We tend to slow down as well. We're not as active as we were before which shouldn't really be the case, but these are things that cause it. So we, we, we slow down our life. And then we have, we have, we have people making comments like, oh, you know, you're, you're getting older. You really need to slow down now because, you know, you're not young again. And then we allow that to play on us mentally. And then we talk to this slow down before we would run upstairs to get stuff that we need. But now we send the children up the stairs, you know, <laughs> um, we could go for a walk That's to funny. buy stuff from the corner shop. But now it's like, you know, you send your teen, uh, teenage child, son or daughter to go and get it, you know, you're, you're, so they burn the calories and you're sitting there in front of the TV watching your favorite program. So all those factors, they all, they all, they all, they all you know, they all add up and they cause that problem uh, of us gaining the belly fat. If you're sitting, if you're in a job that requires a lot of sitting, you know, most of us are in a, a stage in our careers where maybe we're managers or we don't run, we don't have to run around anymore like we used to before. We roll from meetings to meetings. We've got the lift at work. So we're not burning any, we're not burning calories. So everything just stores, the first place it hits is the stomach, it stores there. And if you're not doing any form of activity or you're not doing a fat burning activity, and I emphasize on that, a fat burning activity, what will end up happening is your, 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 your belly starts to be, starts to grow the fat starts to store there starts to become bigger and you mm. eat late and you go to bed late you don't get enough sleep you know and you wake up early you go to bed late you know and then what happens is it starts to grow and before you know it, you just look down one day you're like wow where did this come from you know so it creeps up it gradually creeps up on 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 people so these are some of the factors that that uh, that cause cause especially with us as we you know we're we're the middle that middle age for the women, like I said, menopause. <laughs> well, there's some young people on this show too. Don't worry. There's some 30s and 20s of things on the show. So they're not there yet, right? They're still so active. Yeah. Yeah. So 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 they, they can take a cue and, and make sure they stay active. So that yeah. when they get to their um, when they get to their middle age, they they're not battling with this problem. You know, they 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 their, their body has become so used to it that uh, it's already formed kind of like a structure 
because it's used to burning. I was talking to my youngest son um, uh, a few days ago, and I was saying that um, he's fortunate that he's, he's got very high metabolism, so which I had when I was growing, when I was his age as well. You know, so I eat, I could eat almost anything, but then I was very active as well. But adding to the fact that I was very active, I got very high metabolism. So I was saying to him that, oh, it's easy for you because you're young and you've got high metabolism, so you, you easily burn. But I said to him, you still need to be active because at the end of the day, it may not be shown on the outside, but it may be actually shown on the inside. So um, yeah, so that's a, that's an answer to your question. Um, so back to you. I mean, I could carry on yeah, and on and so on, but I've got I've got areas that I need to cover. That I've got you know I like to talk about, but yeah, you you leave. Okay, go now. ahead and go ahead and finish, and we'll ask questions after. Go ahead and finish. Okay, okay. So so um, um, once you once you've established, so we know we have this this problem. Everybody, almost everybody has it. We all tend to slow down. We get so busy. We can't tend to prioritize looking after ourselves, not because we are lazy, but because we just can't seem to find the time and other things crop, creep in. But I always say that if you don't look after yourself, no one else would. So you really have to get to a point where you say, okay, you know what? I want to live longer. I want to live a longer, healthy life. So I really have to do something about this because if I don't, then when I'm supposed to be retired, I'm supposed to be enjoying my life, are we going to be, I might end up shutting to hospital appointments because I've now gotten illnesses that I had no business in getting because I wasn't able to find the time to look after myself. So, um, so once we've, uh, we've started out consulting with a doctor, just telling, you know, making sure that they check you out and that you're, you know, you want to start some form of fitness. Uh, you talk to them about what you're hoping to do, or maybe, get, maybe even get a bit of advice and tell them that, you know, you really want to lose the weight and everything. So you're going to be doing aerobic exercises. You're going to be doing anaerobic exercises. You're going to be doing strength exercises, just a little bit of each because you, you need all three of them as cocktail of exercises to help you stay fit and healthy. Then you can start the process of uh, targeting the fat. So, so the, I noticed that someone posted a question saying, what are the fat burning exercises? So you start off with aerobic exercises aerobic exercises are exercises that are fat burners so they're not they're not high intensity fast paced exercises they're slow exercises and because they're slow and you do them for longer your body keys into your fat reserves and starts to burn the fat most people don't realize that i was talking i went running um uh, uh, oh, yeah, please, you, before you go on, what are some ex um, examples of that so we can follow you? What are some examples yes, of aerobic? Yes, so, I, that, so I, I'm, I'm, going to, I'm going to give an example. Okay. So, um, so this, I was, this, this is why I wanted to share this, this, okay. uh, ex uh, this, um, this experience I had with this, this gentleman that I saw. So he said to me, he said, oh, my belly is quite big, you know, um, and I'm really trying to, to lose the weight. So I was, it was a runner. I was running and he was running. I finished running, but he was running and he was talking to a friend of his who was talking to me after my run. So he said, oh, I've just come out to just go for a quick run because I'm trying to lose the belly. So I said to him, I said, she says, oh, I'm really going to, pay, I'm really going to run very hard. I'm going to run very fast. So I said to him, I said, I said, you're getting it wrong. Running fast is good, but it's cardiovascular. And it's, it's an example of an anaerobic exercise. You burn carbs when you run fast, you don't burn as much fat when you run fast than when you run uh, when you run slow. So an example of an aerobic exercise is uh, brisk walking, or slow running, or slow skipping. Those are those are very good examples. So one of the quickest ways to lose weight quick and fast is to go for a brisk walk. Mm. Because when you go for a brisk walk. It's an, it's, 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 it's an example of an aerobic exercise. Your body realizes the fact that you're going at a slow pace, as you're not running. So it because it, 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 it doesn't know how long you might be doing this for, it decides at that point, I need to get the best type of foil for this exercise because this man or this woman may decide to walk for the next one hour. So your body begins to 
key into your fat receptors and starts to burn fat as fuel for your journey. So, so say, for example, I get up now for example, and I say, right, I want to lose weight, so I'm going to start this walk. So I get out of the house, get my gloves on. It's getting cold in the UK. Get my gloves on, get my gear on, get my cap on, put my layers on, you know, and I'm out the door and I start walking. So I walk for the first 10 minutes, you know, walk for the second, uh, next second 10 minutes or 20 minutes and I keep going. The longer I walk, the more fat I burn and the higher the percentage of fat I burn as opposed to carbs. So, so, so if you've got any fat stored around your body, your body will start to use that fat as fuel. That's why you lose more weight. You lose weight quicker when you brisk walk as opposed to when you're running fast. Now, running, when you're running fast, you tend to use carbs. So from your rice, from your pasta, you know, all those carbs, you burn them when you're, because your body needs instant energy. So because it needs en instant energy, it burns more of that than fat. Mm. I've proven this and I've tested this. My watch, for example, tells me what percentage of fat I burn as opposed to what percentage of carbs I burn. So when I go for my um, slow runs, it says I've burned, for example, the energy I've used, I've burned 50% of, of fat and only, um, I don't know, uh, 40 something percent of carbs. So that way I'm burning more fat, which is essential to me losing the weight. Because a strategy with losing belly fat is you want to lose the weight first. You want to shed all the fat so that when you shed the fat, you can then move on to defining your, the muscles. And that's when you begin to see uh, the, the six pack or the different definition that you get on, you know, on, you know, on your, on your stomach. You're not going to see it if fat is still on the surface and you're not going to burn that fat if you don't do an exercise that helps you burn the fat. So you can do some aerobic exercises, for example, that help you burn the fat. You know, there, there's, there's some on, on YouTube. I think I've got some on my YouTube channel as well. You know, they're just slow. They're not, they're not really high intensity. There's just, just a bit slower than, you know, high intensity. You, you, you use more fat when you do those exercises than, than if you do like, you know, like the high intensive interval training exercises, which they call HIIT, you know, the heat exercises. So brisk walking is one of the most efficient and one of the quickest ways to lose fat if you're trying to lose fat. One of the quickest and most efficient ways you know, to do that. Any exercise, so for example, you might do weight. If it's not really, really fast and you're doing it slow, you will end up burning more fat than actually burning calves. And that way, you know, um, you will lose, you will lose fat generally all over your body, including the belly fat. Now I know this is, I, I've, I've proven this over the years, not because I had to lose fat myself, but because I remember a time when my wife was trying to lose weight, having, having three children, and she tried everything, you know, and she was just going to start exercising and say, okay, you know, let's just start with the walking and step walking. And she did that for, for quite a while. Now, as she carried on walking and extending her distance, she started, she started losing the fat. And she started losing the weight and the weight came up, came up dramatically, you know, to a point where it became noticeable. And people were saying, wow, you really lost the weight. Now that's because she was walking, doing brisk walking and burning more fat than caps, which you needed to get rid of because all the fat that's stored, you know, in, you know, all around the body. So, um, but one of the, if, like I always say to people, you know, there are different levels. Some people, um, they've got a lot of fat and they really want to lose, they, they've got to a point where um, they're, they're in the danger zone. They've got so much fat and they really need to lose it desperately because it's becoming a health issue or it could eventually end up with, you know, uh, maybe diabetes or heart disease or whatever. And they need to do something drastic. I, I always recommend that you try intermittent fasting because that really pushes, it pushes it through. So intermittent fasting helps because you reduce what you're putting in, you know, and when you reduce what you're eating, putting in and you add uh, aerobic exercise, like uh, slow aerobic exercise, like brisk walking, or slow skipping or slow uh, Zumba dancing or whatever it is that you add to it, you will end up burning the fat 
and your weight will come down quickly. I've proven this. I have people who I'm coaching who, for example, um, I've put them on, on, on that program and they've actually noticed they were losing the weight. And I'm not talking uh, just a, a point, uh, point zero, zero a kilogram. I'm talking about like losing like two kilograms in a week, you know, something that drastic. Uh, because it just works. If you reduce what you're putting in um, and you do some form of exercise to bomb what you already have on you, you will lose the weight. So there's so many different types of intermittent fasting. There's the, the, the ones that you can just decide, you know what, I'm just going to, um, I'm going to uh, have fruits in the morning. I'm going to reduce my, my lunch. I just have salads in, uh, in the afternoon and in the evening. I'm going to reduce my portion dramatically and just have a fruit with it. If you can do that consistently and you, you're able to keep doing that for, uh, for up to 21 days, you form a habit of it, you will, in fact, you, by, by, the, by, by the end of the first week, you'll notice that you're, you, 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 you know, you've lost the weight. So intermittent fast is definitely something I would, I would definitely like to recommend because it works, but not on its own. Because if you do intermittent fasting and you're not doing any form of fitness, then you're not really going to be fit or healthy because all you're doing is you're just burning what you've got, but you're not doing anything you know, to keep your body fit by doing any form of exercise. So you want to focus on doing, like I said before, on exercises that are high fat burners, um, like I said, brisk walking, gradually build it up. The, 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 the preference is, or the, the goal is to be able to brisk walk for up to an hour or you're not going to be able to achieve that in the first day you go out for brisk walking. So what you really want to do is you want to gradually build up. So the first time you go out, maybe you go out, you brisk walk for five minutes. The next time you go out, so you can start off with like maybe twice a week or even once a week. You go out brisk walking, you do 10 minutes. In the next second week, go brisk walking, you go twice that week and then you increase it to 15 minutes each time. So that's 30 minutes. And then you gradually increase it to get to a point where you're brisk walking for up to an hour. Because the longer you brisk walk for, the more fat you burn and the, the quicker you lose the weight. Uh, also, um, you need to watch what you eat. Like I said, if you're not reducing what you're eating and you're not careful about what you, if you're eating all, all the sweets, things, like loads of cakes, donuts, uh, putting a lot of sugar in your tea, you're drinking a lot of those juices that, uh, that, that you know, they're called fruit juice. And you're thinking that because you're drinking them, you're, you're, you're living healthy they've got a lot of sugar in them. The sugar is going to get stored in your body because you're not using it. So the, the body will convert that, that, that sugar and store it in your organs and also underneath your skin. And of course, down your belly as well. So you need to make sure you, 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 know, you reduce all that or gradually reduce them. I'm not going to say stop immediately or just stop all at once. Gradually reduce them to a point where you, you are now able to win yourself off them. You also need to reduce your carbs because if you're eating carbs and you're not doing any fat and you're not doing any carb burning exercises, any high intensive exercises that will require carbs as instant energy, your body's going to convert them to sugar and just store them in your body. And obviously then you have issues like diabetes, which you could be playing with because you've got high sugar in your blood and your, uh, your body's, your pancreas is trying to secret insulin to try and convert it to sugar and it's going overkill because there's so much and then it gets to a point where it becomes weak and then uh, you now end up with type 2 diabetes so there are other things other factors that can come out of this if we don't make an effort to try and reduce this so um um if we reduce our carb intake so carbs obviously we know what carbs are like pasta rice bread pizza i'm not saying stop altogether i'm saying reduce them you know, we have to be realistic. If you gradually reduce them, you can eventually win yourself off them or have a situation where you've got, you eat less of carbs. You're not going to, we're not saying eliminate carbs completely because you do need carbs as part of a healthy diet. But you, what you want to do is you want to reduce them, but you want to increase your protein, the protein that you eat, because that repairs your body and repairs your, you know, helps to repair your organs. And when you do, you're doing your fitness, helps to repair your muscles and all that. Another thing you also need to be careful about is eating your last meal as early. One of, well, a tip that I would give you is eating, you don't want to be careful about eating your last meal late. So you want to eat your last meal as early as you can before going to bed. I would recommend between six and seven o'clock um, because that way you give your food enough time to digest. You don't really, I don't know if you've ever had that. I've had it before where maybe for some 
freezing. I've had a very hectic day. And then I've eaten so late and I've gone to bed. And uh, because I've gone to bed and I've not given myself enough time for the food to digest, I'm very uncomfortable. I feel bloated. You know, the stomach feels bloated. And if you keep doing that over and over again, what you find is it begins to gather around the stomach. You know, begin to have those layers. They start coming gradually. It creeps up on you. You, may, you know, it's not, it's, it's not inst It doesn't happen overnight. It just gradually creeps up on you. You don't even realize it until one day you look in the mirror and then you find, oh my God, what's going on here? Where did this come from? So we really need to, if we do all these things religiously and we try to keep and pray about it, because I, as, as a Christian, I always say that some of these things, I know they're not easy, but you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. Just pray about it and say, Lord, I really want to hit this hard. These are the things I really want to do. Help me to be able to achieve them. And God will give you the grace to be able to achieve them. So um, um, another thing also I, I also want to recommend is once you've lost the weight, then you want to start doing exercises that target the stomach area. You know, so what most people tend to do is they say, oh, I want to attack this uh, belly fat. So they start doing all those exercises. You know, the exercises are good, but you need to shed the fat first and then begin to carve your body. So you begin to, you fine tune your, you fine tune your, 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 all the muscles around your body um, by doing specific exercises that target that area. So there are a lot of stomach exercises that you can do, crunches that you can do that really help you to um, work on the upper stomach, the mid stomach and the lower stomach. I'm going to make those available for us to be able to see them because it's, it's, it's better when you see them so you can, you, can, you can try them. But the first part of call, like I always say to people is focus more on aerobic exercises that will help you burn the fat because once you've shed the fat, then you can start working on definition. Don't say, oh, I want to start doing stomach exercises now because if I do them, I can tighten myself. And then you get frustrated because although you're fine tuning your, 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 your muscles, you can't actually see because it's all buried under the fat. And that's what makes people a lot more frustrated because they're like, it's not working, it's not working. I'm doing all this stomach crunches, but I can't see the difference. That's because you need to burn the fat that's on the, on the surface. Now, um, like I said earlier on, consistency is the key and being patient. What most people do is they start off, they do it for like two or three weeks. They don't see the results or they do it for a month. They don't see the results and then they give up and they say, it's not working. You know, I'm just going to eat whatever I want. Well, it's not working. Or they, they, they decide they want to do some of these very crazy diets that are not very healthy. Um, and then, you know, they have uh, uh, illnesses because of that. If you make this a lifestyle and you decide that, you know, I'm going to make this a lifestyle, I'm going to patiently change what I eat. I'm going to patiently introduce some form of exercise. I'm going to do this the right way. I'm going to include intermittent fasting because it helps me to, to give, you know, give my digestive system a rest. So, it, you know, constantly trying to process all this stuff that we stuff into ourselves. Give it a rest, you know. I'm not saying don't give yourself a treat. But at the end of the day, if you're just starting to lose weight, that's not when you give yourself a treat. You give yourself a treat when you begin to see some meaningful progress. Then when you give yourself a treat, you're not giving yourself a treat that will take you back to square one again. You know, um, but consistency is the key. Being able to, that's why I, I always advise people like coach, I said, look, don't go crazy saying I'm going to hit the gym five times a week. I'm going to run five times a week. I'm going to run six times a week because I really want to get this. No, start gradually, you know, kick off the intermittent fasting, uh, then introduce one week, one day a week of exercise, brisk walking for five, 10 minutes and gradually build it up. When you do it that way, it becomes a lifestyle and it's easier for you to be consistent. And that way you're not struggling because you'll gradually allow your body to adjust to this new way of living, this lifestyle, and it's easy. Um, another area that people um, forget as well is sleep. The body needs sleep. When you sleep, your body begins the repair process, repairs all the muscles, repairs all the internal organs, begins to fine tune what it needs to fine tune. When you've gone for your brisk walking and you're burning calories, it, it carries on when you sleep. Your body needs, a, a needs time to rest. 
to, to rest and recover. If you're not giving yourself enough rest for recovery, you will find that it could it will actually hamper you losing the weight as well, which of course, as we say, includes belly fat as well. So you also need to give yourself some a good rest. I mean, good rest is like six. I think most people sleep between six to eight hours. You know, and if you find that you're maybe you're working on a project or you've been under pressure, you've had a few days where you've not been able to sleep well, make sure you catch up on your sleep and find time to rest properly because that is also very, very, very important. So I'm going to stop there for now because I know people probably have lots of questions um, that they might want to ask. Um, so uh, back to you, Dr. Marino. Um, yeah, thank I'll you stop, so I'll much. Stop for now I, I know I've said a lot, but... <laughs> Yeah, well, but... thank you so much. Thank you so much for that. I just want to, if you have any questions, please feel free to write it um, in the chat box. And so we can we can get to your questions. But I just want to, uh, I have a few myself that that we okay. already, you already, you know, um, highlighted a lot of this, but I want to deconstruct them a little bit. So okay. for example, you talked about brisk walking. So what does brisk walking look like? What is the pace for that? How do you know okay. your brisk walking and not because we have to really let people know what that is um, because yeah. what might be brisk to me might not be brisk to you, right? So what what does that is there a way to measure that? So um, I would say if you're start if you're someone who's just starting off like everything else, your um, your muscles and your joints need to get used to what your this new way of living that you're throwing at it. So it's important that you gradually build things up so even with a brisk walking you're starting off at a pace that is a bit faster than if you're just going for a stroll without overdoing it so you don't want to you don't want to get to a point where you're you're going so fast that you'll end up with injury because your muscles are not used to going that fast your joints are not used to going that fast and they, and if you're trying to lose weight for example you know because of the weight that your body's carrying if you, if you hit it hard too soon, you could end up with an injury. So what you want to do is you want to, you want to go a, a little bit faster than what you would, uh, you want to walk a little bit faster than the way you would walk if you're going for a stroll that just down the street without getting to a point where you're exhausted. Now, as you start off, so you start the first week, for example, uh, you go for what we call a brisk walk, which is different to everyone. Because if I go for a brisk walk, my brisk walking will not be a lot of people brisk walking. Because when I run, I, you know, I, depending on how, what I'm trying to achieve, I could be running very, very fast without, without feeling very tight. Besides, my joints and my muscles are used to it. So if I'm going for a brisk walk, it's going to be a lot faster than some people when they're going for a brisk walk. So it's, it's, it's subjective to, to, you know, to us as individuals, depending on where we are in terms of our fitness. Um, and also, for example, if you're you're just new and just trying to lose the weight what you don't want is because of the weight that you're carrying you don't want to go too fast to a point where you now sprain your leg or you just you 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 know you sprain a muscle or your joint goes off funny or sheen begins to hurt you or, or whatever it is so what you want to do is you want to gradually build it up so you're just going to go a little bit faster than if you're just going for a stroll you know that's what we call that's what we mean by brisk walking now obviously as you um carry on with the process so you get the first week you start off the next week your aim is to go a little bit faster and if by the third week you're going a lot faster and you what you get you get to a point where you're actually brisk walk to to almost as almost as fast as if you're you're you're, you're actually um uh, running jogging I, I i know someone who's had that who was i was talking to someone a coach and she was saying that um where she's at like brisk walking um it, 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 she's finding it difficult to brisk walk because she breaks into a jog because she's been doing it for so long she's found that she, she can she conveniently is able to actually start jogging at a slower pace rather than brisk walking because her body's used to it the muscles are already used to it in terms of her fitness her lungs and her heart are, 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 are stronger and are able to you know to 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 go at a faster pace so she's able to go a bit faster so that's what we mean by brisk walking it's subjective to where you are in terms of uh, in terms of exercise i hope that answers the question yeah that answers the question thank you uh okay so intermittent fasting is the other thing you you alluded to uh, 
personally, like I started, I picked that up because when I, I found out that during the this COVID thing, I was I was gaining weight, and I put on like five pounds, and yeah. and and I just thought, okay, we're not gonna do this. So something drastic had to happen, and so one of yeah. what I did was the intermittent fasting. So uh, I know they're different different ones. So mine was to stop eating, to start eating at I think it's like twelve because I keep moving yeah. it. I, it started with like start eating at 12 o'clock and then stop eating at eight. But you just yes. said that, um, uh, but we, that we should, that eight, that seven, between six and seven is better, right? Yeah, so, so, so it, it, different types of intermittent fasting. Um, you can, if you're someone who's been doing it for a while, you, you've gotten to a point where like, like, like there's, there's someone like coach, for example, what she does is, so she doesn't have any breakfasts. Uh, she barely has anything for lunch. And then the evenings when she has a, a the, like a main meal, she doesn't, she, she, she will have a main meal between seven, about seven ish, between 6.30 and seven ish. So um, it depends on the type of intermittent fasting that you, you know, you want to, you, you're thinking of using in terms of losing weight. Um, if what you're, if, if the intermittent fasting you're using says that you, I mean, like the one that you're, that you just shared, for example, is you want to have your last meal about eight o'clock because you've um, you've not had anything to maybe a little to eat in the morning or nothing to eat in the morning. If I don't eat barely anything in the afternoon and the, the evening is your main meal, what you really want to do is you want to make sure you don't go to bed too early. So if you would normally go to bed at 10 because you've had your main meal at eight o'clock, you might want to push your going to bed a bit further so maybe 11 to give you your you know full enough time full enough time to, yeah. to, to eat but if you're going to bed at 11 and you want to make sure you get enough sleep or good sleep then it means you're going to have to probably end up waking up a little bit later than you normally would so um it all depends on where you're at in terms of losing the weight and what you're trying to achieve if you're at the point where you really need to push this weight down because you're you're hitting the danger zone you might have said to yourself right you know I'm going to do this for the next four weeks and see what I'm able to achieve. And then after four weeks, you review it. And then you, at that point, you might decide to change it. Okay, right. I pushed down. I've, I've lost about 10 kg. Now I'm going to change it slightly. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the intermittent fasting that allows me to eat a little bit in the morning, a little bit in the afternoon, and a tiny little bit in the evening. And I'm going to eat it early. And then I'll see how that goes. So it's just about, it's, it's about knowing when to change them and how to um, how to how to uh, how to tweak it as you begin to see the results. But remember, we're doing this as well as um, adding fitness to it as well. So we're, we're we're combining both. We're not focusing on just the intermittent fasting. So I, I always say I always introduce intermittent fasting where it's a desperate situation where we really need to push the weight down like now because it's becoming they're getting to a danger zone. Where they really need to lose the weight to avoid any serious health implications so i introduce it there to push it down and then my goal is to get them to a point where um they watch what they're eating they're not necessarily intermittent fasting 24 7. they've not got to a point where they can control their calorie intake and they're burning what they need to burn and it's now become a lifestyle so they're set and you know they can just carry on, carry on that way yeah so we have a question um thank you for that um uh, I know they're both uh, useful, but what's more important for weight loss, exercise or diet? Uh, both. You can't, you, I know someone who's um, fo targeted, focused on the diet and didn't do anything with regards to uh, exercise or fitness. The problem with, it, with that is you're not healthy because although you're losing the weight, you still need to exercise your body. You might still have some fat around your organs. For example, the liver is designed to store fat, for example. Some of that you'll shift it when you're actually doing exercise, as well as um, when you do exercise, your heart, your lungs, your internal organs, joints, all those, um, you, 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 you fine tune them. You, 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 they all add to your overall body fitness. So you need to do both. It's not healthy for you to just go on this crash diet or just decide to go on this intermittent fast and not do any form of exercise. So you may lose the weight. It does not necessarily mean that your 
you're 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 healthy, you know, or that you're fit. I know people who are slim, for example, they're slim. You you wouldn't see any ounce of fat on them, but they're not fit. If you walk up the stairs, it'll be like, you know, they're exhausted. So even though they're not they're not then they're, they're slim, they're not fat. They don't have any ounce of fat on them, but they're not fit because I'd rather have a person who has a little bit of fat, but is fit, than a person who is slim but doesn't do any form of exercise because you know they're not fit at all, and that's that's a danger dangerous place to be. Not just one thing that you do; you've got to do, you know, combine them together, and that's when you get a good result, a sustainable good result that will last you for years. Hmm. Thank you. So. Uh... We found out that, like someone, someone like me, I'm pretty active. I exercise all the time. Um, however, when I eat it, when I eat late, is when the is when the problem starts. You know, if I start eating past eight o'clock, yes, then you know I'll, I'll put on weight where I'm not supposed to put it on. So the question from someone is, is this? It says, what? Do, how do you effectively deal with those hunger pangs? and cravings that come around 10 30 to 11 p.m okay so um that, that i'll tell you what i do the two ways that you could if there's two ways that you can deal with them um one have a cup of tea with milk in it if you drink if you i mean if you, if you drink milk a little bit of honey you'd be surprised at how how much difference you <laughs> you how much different you'll feel by just having a cup of tea and that's one thing um Salads are very good, very low in calorie, but they fill you up. You know, just a little bit of salad with a little bit of uh, just some strips of chicken on it. Those will do a, a good trick. Um, you know, they, they'll do the job. Um, there are also some very low uh, carb, like yogurts or, uh, or snacks that you can also buy that are very low, very, very low calorie. And it's not about eating a lot to a point where you're having a meal. Sometimes you, you, you're, you're just looking for something. You just feel a bit picky. You just need, need something to put in your mouth to chew. And then you're fine. Drink maybe a cup of tea on top of it, or decaffeinated coffee, and you're good. You know, you hit the side and you're okay. fine. So okay. um, it's, 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 it's just knowing all those very low calorie, healthy things to eat that, you know, that you could, you know, you could take a fruit, for example, as well. I know, I know fruits are, could be also high in sugar, but obviously you're not going overkill. So you might take a tangerine or or banana or an orange, you know, just just a little bit to keep your mouth active and give you that mental feeling that you've put something in. It's all you really, really, really need. Nuts are also very good. Another very good thing. Nuts, you know. So like, it's not that you shouldn't eat after a certain time. It's 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 basically what I'm hearing you say is. You can still snack after in the evening. Yeah, I mean, don't later eat, don't eat. Yeah, don't eat your main meal, a huge oh, okay. meal. So if you're sitting down and you're destroying a bowl of uh, eba or <laughs> porridge or rice with plantain and chicken and uh, then that's a dangerous. Ha a ball. <laughs> <laughs> then that, now you're asking for trouble because that's huge. That's a huge meal. You know, and also remember that if you're eating late and you're eating a lot of chicken or you're eating a lot of meat, their protein, it takes a long time for them to digest. You're asking for trouble. So that's why you need to eat as early as you can so that you give your body enough time to, you know, to burn, to digest the food properly. And then you hit the sack and then you go to sleep. So if, for example, you find that you're, you normally go to bed at 10 or you're awake and it's, I don't know, 10, 30, and you just feel a little bit of, just grab a fruit, you know, eat some nuts, um, have a cup of tea, just something to give you that mental feeling that at least you're eating some, or some salad. And that, that would normally do the trick. Um, but if you find that you're, this is becoming a habit and you're doing that every time, then you might want to check that as well. So like you're not, it's not every time, oh, I think I need a snack now. You know, every time you're going for a snack, and, you know, you're going to snack, all the snacks had up. And then the next thing you know, it's self-control has, you know, self yes, self has to come into play, right? Abs okay, absolutely. So I, absolutely. So we have another question. We have a few more. We have, um, we still have time. Okay. So it's not a question. It's really a statement. Um, 
So we are about intermittent fasting. And I want you to talk to them. Okay. So it's like, okay. um, it said the, the goal is to fast at least 18 hours, two times a week. Okay. So basically that's the goal to fast at least 18 hours, two times a week. So for example, after eating your, your first um, p, um, 10 p.m. snack tonight, don't eat again. Don't, don't eat again till after 6 p.m. tomorrow. Ah, that's a long fast. Uh, well, if, they, they, if, would, that, bio, would that work if you, like, if you want to lose weight, like, you know. You're desperate, yeah. Desperately. So, so, that would yeah, work. So the, yeah, so the different types of intermittent fasting, there isn't just one type. In fact, there are about, I think about six different types of intermittent fasting. So, so they're different levels as well. So some people, they can hit it hard. They're able to, you know what, I'm really going to do this. And they've got the, they've got the stamina and they've got the mental uh, uh, preparedness and they really, really want to get this done. So they're saying to themselves, you know what, I'm only going to have one meal today. I'm not going to have any breakfast. I'm not going to have any lunch. I'm going to have my, 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 my dinner at six o'clock. And once I've had uh, five spoons of rice, with a, little bit of, with a little bit of chicken and a little bit of salad, I'm done and I'm good. So the next, you know, they can do that. That's fine. If you can achieve that, that's fine. Um, however, not everyone is not everyone is able to do that. So they're different types. So for example, there's someone I was coaching and, and, and I just saw and I, said, and I knew that it would be difficult for us. So I said, okay, let's do this intermittent fast. You can have breakfast, but you when you're having breakfast, just maybe have a fruit and a cup of tea, uh, you know, and that's it. And then for your lunch, just have a little bit of salad and you could have a fruit or may not have any fruit. And then for your dinner, then you can have uh, two or three spoons of rice with a little bit of chicken and some salad as well and a fruit and that's it. And she did that and guess what? She actually did lose the weight. It worked. So it depends on where you're at I mean, obviously, if it's seriously, if it's really, really desperate and in a danger zone and they have to do what they have to do, then, yeah, go for it. Go for the, I'm not having any breakfast. I'm not having any lunch. I'm going to have my dinner. I'm going to have, you know, a reasonable dinner, but not too much. And I'm going to do that for next week and see how much weight I, I if, if you, yeah, if you can do it, then yeah, do it. Yeah. Have an accountability partner that you account to and say, right, today, I've done this. This is what I had for my lunch. I didn't have any breakfast. I didn't have any this. Um, and you know, I'm good. I'm ready for the next day. And you know, send them your send them what you've done so they can see it, and that way they can encourage you and just keep going. But it, they're 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 um they're they're about six different types of intermittent fast. So it, it depends on what you're able to. I'd rather a person um uh, uses an intermittent fast that is achievable that they're actually going to follow through, then take on too much. And then after the second day, like, oh, I can't do this, it's too much. Oh, no, I, I really, and then they go to like, they go to the extreme and they're like, oh, I give up. And then they go back to eating their yeah, three square meal, their full English breakfast and everything else. And then, <laughs> and then they, you know, <laughs> so it, I, it, it depends on, you. yeah. Yeah, actually, I actually like mine. I, I started with 12 o'clock. I started with 12 o'clock and I stopped eating at, um, I mean, I start eating at 12 and I stop eating at eight and then I moved it to one and then I'm not at three, you know, but it, it, it's fine. It's, it's just like, I want to do what it's comfortable. I mean, I stretch yes. myself a little bit, but I also want to enjoy my life, you know, like I don't yes, want to be like absolutely. feeling like I'm doing, you know, um, I'm suffering, you know? Uh, so then, then the question is, uh, the butt, you know, your buttocks, you know, yes. women seem to get weight around the buttocks. Your hips get bigger. You eat, like I saw, you know, like I don't eat donut because if I eat donut, it goes to my butt. So it's not <laughs> going to work. Uh, so what do you, how do you lose weight in your, you know, in your butt? Okay. So I'm going to go straight back to use the example that I used earlier on. And I'm going to use my wife as an example. Um, same thing. She's at, she's at the same problem as well. Uh, hips putting on weight around the hips and putting on weight around the butt as well because genetically um, in their family that's that's the way they are 
So she wanted to lose the weight. She wanted to lose the weight in the stomach. She wanted to lose. So those were the problem areas, the stomach, the hips, and the butt as well. So simple. We just decided, you know what? Intermittent fasting, brisk walking. And she has stuck with it religiously. And she, she, she has lost the weight in those areas as well. The problem is people start, but they're not consistent. If you watch what you put in your mouth, you know, receive grace to actually gradually, and it's not, don't, don't go over I say, you know, I'm just going to stop eating all those donuts. I'm going to eat no more scones, no more pizza. Gradually reduce it, but be consistent with your dieting, be consistent with your exercise, your brisk walking. You will lose the weight. She actually did lose the weight. And in fact, people didn't think that she'd lose weight in that part because, you know, in their family, that's the way they are. So, but because she consistently stuck with it, she has actually lost the weight in those areas. Sometimes I look at that, I'm like, wow, unbelievable. This thing is achievable. You can actually do it, it's possible. If, and if my wife could do it, honestly, there's no one else who can't do it. And she did, she did. She, and she's lost, and she's kept it off as well because she's carried, it's now a lifestyle. I said to her when she started this journey, I said, look, this is not about, getting yourself down to a dress size and all that. This is about changing your lifestyle completely. This is about changing your diet, changing, starting to do some exercise. She's not like me. I love to do exercise. She really wasn't interested. But we got to a point where she was like, I said, look, I love you the way you are. But at the end of the day, we're not getting any younger. We're over 50. We really, really, really need to do something. And she hit it hard. And now, getting compliments, people are saying, wow, you've lost this weight. I mean, the other day we looked at a picture that she took a few years ago when she was still battling with the weight and she couldn't believe she was the same person. Why? Because she was consistent. It's the consistency that brings the result. You will lose the weight in those areas. Honestly, if you start your brisk walking and you gradually build it up and it becomes part of your lifestyle and you gradually watch what you eat and begin to reduce what you eat, yeah, you go to the shop, for example, you're going shopping, um, anything that's light or low fat, grab that. It may not taste as nice, but trust me, it's an acquired taste. You get used to it eventually. You know, it becomes a lifestyle. And then you get so used to it that you watch what you, I'm not saying you don't give yourself a treat. I mean, you can, you can do that from time to time, but a treat is a treat. It's not the norm where you, you, you're giving yourself treats every night and you're doing the exercise, but you're not seeing the results. So it's, you've got to find a balance. If you reduce what you're putting in and you're burning what you have on you, the weight will definitely come down. Okay. Okay. So um, we need to talk about um, men that have um, their bellies. You know, um, what do they do? What do they need to do? What, is it? Okay. Basically, you've said they just need to start walking and doing that. But you know, if somebody has like a really big stomach, yeah, what do they do? Yeah, and 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 then maybe also let them know that it's going to take time. Uh, yeah. Just hearing that from you might 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 help. But 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 what do they do? Where do they even start? Okay, I think the first thing is in you need to settle in your mind that there's nothing impossible, and there's nothing too hard for God to do. You're coming from a point of view that you realize the fact that you really need to um, get rid of this belly fat. And you're now, you, you, regardless of what everybody says, you want to do this for yourself. So because of course the health implications, the fact that, you know, people end their lives earlier because they're not thinking about it seriously. They laugh about it, they joke about it. But you've now got to a little point where you say, you are, I really have to do something. What you really need to start off with is saying, whether people laugh at me, whether people joke about it, I am going to do this. Whatever it takes, I am going to do this. So you start up with your brisk walking as well because your brisk walking will help you lose weight from your belly and every other part of your body. Your, your body knows that that's where you have a lot more fat and it needs that fat to burn as well. So when you step out of that door and you put on your your, your trainers and you've got your gear on and you say, I'm going for a brisk walk. Your body knows that this man 
has a lot of his fat in the stomach. I need that fat to burn as energy and it will start burning that fat. Of course, as well, you've got to watch your diet as well. You can't say you want to lose that belly fat and then after you've done all that hard work, you come back and then you're eating um, a high carb diet at 10 o'clock and then you wonder why it's not going down. You have to say to yourself, you know what? I must reduce what I take in. I must reduce what I put in my mouth and burn the excess. And that way it will come down. You know, it's the same principle. Watch what you're eating. I'm not saying don't give yourself treat. I'm not saying all of a sudden stop eating, I don't know, pounded jam or semolina or a bar. I'm not saying that. Reduce, start off by reducing your portions. Reduce the portions that you're taking in. Eat more, um, eat more, um, what do you call it? Eat more protein. I mean, even if you're going to eat protein, don't eat it uh, late at night when it doesn't digest and just sits in your stomach. You know, you want to eat it um, in the afternoon or early evening so your body burns it. And that way, you know that um, your body's burning um, the, the, the fat. Because when you do your brisk walking, you don't stop burning your calories when you, come, when you finish your walk. Your body carries on burning the calories. So that's, uh, that's also something that we need to note. So the body doesn't stop burning calories when you stop exercise, it carries on. So um, I would just like to encourage you at the end of the day, it can be done, you can achieve it. If you trust in God to motivate you, have an, and also develop, find an accountability partner, somebody that you can update on what you're doing. So, uh, so for example, you say, oh, today I went on a 5K brisk walk, I went on a 30 or 20 minutes brisk walk, um, I, I, this is what I ate today. Because you're accounting to someone, it encourages you, you to stay focused. And trust me, it works. You will lose the belly fat. You will. Once you've started that and you're getting to, you're, you're, you're getting to a particular point, then you can add, um, when, you, when you're losing the fat, then you can begin to add stomach crunches and all these exercises to define the muscle. There's no point defining the muscle if there's fat covering it because you're going to be discouraged. Because all you're going to see is the fat and you're going to say, all this stomach crunches, I'm punishing myself, I'm not seeing any result. But when you begin to see the fat dropping, then you can begin to uh, 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 go for body definition um, and begin to, um, you know, begin to burn, uh, begin to define the muscles around, around your stomach and other parts of your body. That's when you start with the weights, you start with the stomach crunches. And it's, I mean, I, I got, I'll be posting a lot of these exercises on my uh, Facebook page. Um, Spirit Runners UK, the group, so you can ask to join and I would obviously um, accept your invites. And then you see quite a lot of resources that I'm, I'm putting there that you'll be able to use that will help you as well to encourage you and help you achieve your goal. So I hope, I've, I hope that's been able to, uh, to some point, answer the question. Yes, you um, have. Thank you so much. And so if somebody drinks a lot of beer, should they re should they also reduce that? I mean, if, because alcohol has a, uh, also, does it? Like, yes, I mean. yes, <laughs> yes. Alcohol definitely is yeah. one of the major factors that is a problem with men and the belly fat. Because for some funny reason, I mean, I don't drink myself, but I've got friends who drink and they tell me for some funny reason, it just stays in the stomach. It just has this way of just bloating the stomach. You know, um, so if you really, really want to lose the weight, you have to reduce your alcohol consumption. There's no two ways about it. It's like the carbs. You know, if you reduce what you take putting in, then and you you burn what you have already on you, the weight will come down. So alcohol consumption, carbs, you know, the type of carbs that you eat, processed food, all this fast food, going to McDonald's, Kentucky Fried Chicken, Wendy's and all the rest. You really cannot be eating that because they're all processed. You really can. If you have to, I'm going to be realistic, reduce it, gradually reduce it to a point where you, you know, you eventually stop because they're actually not healthy. You know, I mean, if you have to, if you, if you, if you have to eat it, they're healthy. I mean, there's, there's healthy fast food there, like where um, a Subway, for example, they, they, they make a lot of healthy stuff because there's salads and, and the breads that they, you know, make, there's quite a lot of healthy fast foods that are coming up now that are out there, but McDonald's and um, what do you call it, KFC, absolutely, definitely a no-no. 
you may find it right. difficult, but reduce it, gradually reduce it, you know, to, you know that way it's easier. Absolutely. Thank you so much. And uh, thank you, everyone. I think that we're, we actually went a little bit over, but before we leave, I'm on the mission and the mission is to make sure that we all drink more water. Water Absolutely. is your friend. Okay, Absolutely. it takes the place of um, of juices and uh, yep. sodas and all of those drinks that we all like to drink. And on the continent, there's nothing as good as water. Get yourself water and just drink water all day, and that would help you flush out all kinds of impurities. And also, it's good for your mental health. And so that's my little plug-in about drinking water. Would you agree? Yes, I was actually going to. I was actually going to say something about that. You'll find that when you start doing exercise, this, and you start your brisk walking, you no one will tell you they, there's nothing better than water to cool you down and to help your recovery. When you come back from that brisk walk, the first thing you really want is, oh, I just need some water. You'll find that you actually start drinking water because when you when you're doing all this brisk walking or you're running, whatever you're doing, you tend to sweat more. You're losing water so what better way to replace the water that you're losing when you're losing water you're losing salts as well so you, you replenish by drinking water you find that you you tend to drink water i drink a lot more water on the days i go running than the days i don't go running i, I don't even have to struggle it's just i just i'm just drinking i'm just drinking you know so it helps to as as, as dr marino said it helps to flush your system you'll find that if you drink water I mean, obviously there's a limit as well. So you could you could drink too much water to a point where it becomes unhealthy. So it's finding a balance. So drink, I think it's your your the recommended is two liters a day, at least at least two liters a day. You know, um, and it and it really it really does help to flush your system, helps you feel a lot more healthy. If you're someone like I say, if you're someone who does a lot of fit, I can't go running without having my water bottle and my ultra marathon vest. I always have a bottle of water with me every time I'm going. And I sip as I'm running. I actually sip water as I'm running. Come when I went both winter and summer holiday and summer, you know, summer seasons and, and winter seasons. So absolutely I totally agree with that. Water is definitely essential. All right. Thank you so much. Uh, we have learned we have learned a lot from you today. If nothing, we've learned that we should we should be co consistent. You know, inconsistency yeah. is the power. Uh, yeah. And so thank you for encouraging us today. We will have the, the link of, for the um, YouTube link. We'll have it on social media so that you guys can, uh, can rewatch this. You have been uh, just a wealth of information. Thank you so much, Spirit Runner. And what if they want to join you? Would they want to follow you? How do they reach you? So you, you could, um, I've got two, two ways that you can connect with me through my YouTube channel, which is Spirit Runners UK. That's one word, Spirit Runners UK. So if you do a search on YouTube, Spirit Runners UK, um, I've got loads of videos that cover every aspect of exercise and health and fitness. I've got interviews by different professionals, from uh, uh, medical doctors to uh, uh, fitness enthusiasts, so many different uh, professionals, and I have a lot of videos and I cover different areas. I also, um, I have a YouTube, um, I have a Facebook group called Spirit Runners UK as well. So if you, if you do a search for it, uh, you ask uh, uh, to join. Um, I will, I will accept your invite. Uh, yeah, I will accept your request, and you can join. So from my uh, Facebook page. I post articles, I post, you know, different things that I do, like my runs, uh, I cover different, I have uh, members of the group who ask questions, so answer the question, a lot of those questions will actually answer some of the questions that you may have, so you can benefit a lot from that. The YouTube channel has a lot of videos, like I said, I record videos every week, so a video every week, and I cover so many different topics, yes. many, many, many that you can, yeah, so um, those are the ways you can connect with me. Thank you. And also, uh, Bayer is a coach, uh, is, is a coach. If you want him to be your coach, you can reach out to him too, and um, it will be available to see if you guys can, will make a, a good match. So thank you, everyone, and we'll talk to you later. Is Bayer's friends with, oh, I don't know. We'll, we'll talk about it later. Bayer, do you know Andrew Castle? 
Andrew Castle. Yeah. No. no okay. Uh, He's right. trying to Mine, join. I, I'm a, a fitness church. Okay. No, I don't. No, okay. No. All right, guys. Thank you so much. We'll talk to you later. Bye bye, y'all. We, we really appreciate you. Thank you well, so much God. for having me, Dr. Marino. I'm so grateful for having me on your channel. I know it's been a long time coming, but eventually happened. And it's been a privilege mm -hmm. to be uh, you part so of your much. show. Thank you so much for your time okay. as well. Have a good rest of your evening over there. Thank you. We'll just, uh, Thank day, you. we'll just, you know, we'll live Happy it. Okay, bye-bye, guys.